We're now going to look at the, the idea of three intersecting planes. And there are several different things we can happen. In this one, we're going to explore three of the different things that could happen. Given the equations 2x minus 3y plus z is equal to 5, and x plus y minus 2z is equal to 3, and 3x minus 2y plus az is equal to b, find the value of a some number for which the equations will have no unique solution. B. With A taking this value, find the value B must take for there to be an infinite number of solutions to the equations. Interpret this solution geometrically given any relevant equations in Cartesian form. So let's just go and look at this we're using G algebra. So here we have our three planes. The green one is the first one, the orange one is the second plane, and the blue one is the um, it's the third plane with the parameter a equal to 0, so there's no z, and b equal to 0. Now we can see that they actually intersect at a point at this particular value. So the first thing is that the three planes could actually intersect at a particular point. If we move this around a bit, we can see that that's true. But they're actually going to meet at that particular point there. And probably if I change the uh, value of A, which I can probably do, I'll just do that. You might be able to see it better in this situation. You can see they actually meet at a particular point here. Okay, and you've got this uh, GeoGebra applet attached in the description of this video that you can actually get it for yourself. Okay, so let's just set that back to, ze uh, to zero where it was, and then we'll resume. Okay, so there, there is one particular situation. There's these are the three equations, and we can see that they can actually meet a particular point, some value of x, some value of y, and some value of z. Right, if we write these equations out, 2x minus 3y plus z is equal to 5, x plus y minus 2z is equal to 3. Now be careful, I always write my z with a little line in order not to confuse them with a 2. 3x plus 2y plus some value of z, which a z is equal to some number b. Now you can write these in the form of a matrix. So taking out the numbers 2 minus 3, 1, 1, 1, 2 minus 2, 3 minus 2, a, and then put these in another matrix 5, 3b is equal to. So we've got, and remember for matrices, row times column will be equal to that number row times column will be equal to that number and row times column will be equal to that number. No matrix is not really in the IP anymore but it's a good way of understanding this type of problem. Right, so taking the, this uh, matrix, we'll call this a, uh, a, matrix A, let A be equal to that matrix. Now the determinant of this matrix for non-unique solutions has to be equal to zero. So we can find the determinant of this matrix. Now it's very, very similar to doing the cross product or the vector product. What you do is you write down the first number at the top. So you look at these numbers at the top, cross that one off, cross that one off, and then you do the determinants left. One times A minus minus two times minus two. So, so it's one times A minus minus two times minus two. Then you do minus the next one, in brackets minus 3, so be careful with the signs. And then you do, you cross off that one and that one, so you're going to do 1 times a minus, minus 2 times 3. And then you've got the last one which is 1, and then you've got to cross that off, and then cross that off in divided terminal of what's left, 1 times minus 2 minus 1 times 3. 
So that's going to be equal to zero. Right, simplifying that, so we're going to have two a uh, minus minus one is four, so it's going to be minus four. Uh, so we've got to be careful here. Minus three, minus minus three is plus three, and then we're going to have a, uh, and then minus minus two times three, we're going to have plus six. And then we forget about that one there, and we're going to have min in brackets plus minus two minus three is equal to zero. Expanding this bracket, we're going to have 2a minus 8 plus 3a plus 18 minus 5 is equal to 0. So we're going to have 5a plus 5, so we've got minus 8 uh, minus 5 plus 18 is going to give me plus 5 is equal to 0. And we can see that a is equal to minus 1. So if we go to our drawing here and we now put a at minus 1 we'll see our point actually now becomes undefined in our I think now it's very difficult to actually see what's happening here so if we move it around you can actually see here that the planes are going to meet on three different lines so there's one line here there's one line here and there is another line here. If we maybe if we change the value of b, we might be able to see that a bit better. So let's just move them apart. That we can see that much better if we do that. Okay. And what we say here is each plane is a parallel to the. Let's see. I'll put a decent. Each plane. So this orange plane here is parallel to the line of intersection, which is here of the other two and it's the same for this one the blue one is parallel to the line of intersection of these two here and the same here the green one is parallel to the line of intersection of these two and so it doesn't matter what the value of b is except one particular value which we'll look at in a minute this is what will happen I can change B as much as I want now, and this is what's going to happen. I'll just go to the other side. I've got B here between um, uh, minus 10 and 10. Now, there does look like there will be some value somewhere around here where they will all intersect on the same line, which is what the second part of the question is asking you to do. Okay. So there's a drawing of that situation, and each plane being labelled in the respective colour. Okay, so we've actually put in the value of minus 1 here, and this is at 0. And then each plane is parallel to the line of intersection of the other two, which I've just explained to you. Now, there will be some value of A and we keep that value of a minus 1, there'll be another value of b, which will give us an infinite number of solutions. Now, we have to do this, we solve this by using row reduction. So we put them back in our matrices, and we call this one row 1, the second one row 2, and the next one row 3. The object, when we do row reduction, is to make these three here equal to uh, 0. So... We write down row 1 in the next set, and then to make this one a 0, I need to do 2 times row 2 and take away row 1. I can do it the other way around as well. That will give me 0 there, and then I need to do it to every other thing in here. So it's 2 times 1, which is 2, minus minus 3, which gives me 5, 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4, take away 1 gives me minus 5, this is why. Don't forget to do it to this as well. So it's 2 times 3, which is 6. Take away row 1, which is 5, which gives me 1. And now I'm going to have to make this one uh, 0. We'll make this one 0 the next time round. So in order to do that, I'm going to do 2 times row 3 minus 3 times row 1. So we'll play with row 1 here. So 2 times uh, row 3 gives you 6, take away 2 times row 1, which is 6, which will give me 0. 2 times row 3 
will give me here minus 4, uh, minus, uh, minus 9, which will give me 5, and then 3 times minus 1 will give me minus 2, minus, uh, minus 3 is going to give me minus 5, and the last one is going to give me 2b, minus 3 times 5 is 15, so it's going to give me 2b minus 15. Now the idea is to make this one the same. So write down row 1, and then write down my row 2 from here. And now if I do row 3 minus row 2, so 0 minus 0 is going to give me 0. However, I'm going to notice I'm going to get 5 minus 5, and minus 5 minus 5, which is 0. And this is what happens when you have an infinite number of solutions. The last row will come out to be equal to 0. And then the last row here will be 2b minus 15 minus 1, which will become 2b minus 16. Now, for this to be true, 0z must be equal to 0. Otherwise, all this must be equal to 0. So we're going to have, for an infinite number of solutions, we're going to have that 0 is equal to 2b minus 16. What we're saying is 0x plus 0y plus 0z must be equal to 0 to be true, which means an infinite number of solutions. So we can now solve this, put this equal to 0, because all this is 0 equal to 2b minus 16. So 2b is equal to 16, and b will be equal to 8. Now if I go back to my drawing... Okay, and move B, and move B so it's on 8. So move the slider to get 8. You can now see on here that they actually meet on a line. You can see that. And if I click this one here, I will actually get the line to come up. It actually comes up with the equation, which is what we're going to do next. Okay, so we can see that they actually now all three lines plane, sorry, meet on this line. So in order to find the equation of the line, I need to find one point on it and a, a vector parallel to the line. This is what we're going to do next. So in, having done that, so there's my drawing at a different angle. So this is an infinite number of solutions, means that the three planes meet at a line, which is the third thing that we've come across. So we've got a unique solution. Each plane is parallel to the line of intersection of two and then also now we've got three planes meeting on a line of intersection. In another video we'll look at some of, some of the other things that might happen. Right, so writing out the last thing again. And what had to find the uh, equation of the line in section, what I do is, because there's no value of z here, I let z be equal to a, a parameter lambda, and then from row 2 I can say that 5x, sorry, 5y minus 5z is equal to 1, 5y minus 5z, there's no x's here, replace z with lambda, so we get 5y minus 5 lambda is equal to 1, 5y is equal to 1 plus 5 lambda, y is equal to one fifth plus lambda and then from row one I'm going to have 2x minus 3y plus z is equal to 5. I'm going to replace for y and z here so I'm going to have 2x minus 3 times 1 plus 5 lambda over 5. I just um, made a common denominator here because it would be easier to deal with plus lambda is equal to 5 we have 2x is going to be equal to 5. That will be plus 3 over 5 when I take over here, and then the 5s will cancel. So I get plus 3 lambda, because it's going to be minus on this side. When I take it over, and then minus lambda. And then I'm going to do uh, 5 plus 3 over 5, which gives me 28 over 5 minus 2 lambda, divided by 2. I'm going to get 28 divided by 10, which is uh, 14 over 5 plus lambda. Now I can now write down the vector equation because I have the points uh, 14 over 5 
1 fifth and 0 from here and add the directional vector because this is 1, this is 1 and this is 1 and if I go back to the drawing okay here it just says the directional vector is 5 by 5 which is the same as 1 1 1 and this 2.8 is 14 over 5 0 0.2 is 1 fifth Now to get to the Cartesian equation, I'm just going to rewrite these like this, making the same denominator because it would be a bit easier. Then I'm going to do uh, for x, 5 times x minus 14 divided by 5. The Cartesian equation, 5x minus 14 divided by 5. And for this one, I'm going to, so that's going to be equal to, so making a lambda the subject, 5y minus 1 divided by 5. And the last one will be equal to z, because these are all equal to lambda. So this is the Cartesian equation, which is the answer of the line of intersection. So just going back to this one again. Okay, you can see this, and this app is actually combined with this video. Sorry it's a bit long, this video.